We would like to next introduce combustion. We all know about fires. We've learned about fires since we were small children. And usually sort of it's introduced using the fire triangle that if you have fuel and oxygen and heat, you end up with a fire. Well, this is all correct. So fuel and an oxidizer. Often it is O2, oxygen, but it could be other things that just simply provide that O2 in the right circumstances. And then if I have some sort of spark or other heat source, then it will form combustion products. And the fire is the visible sign of that. Now, I need to balance my chemical reactions by counting the molecules and looking specifically at the number of atoms each molecule has. So right now, I know that, for instance, if you burn hydrogen with oxygen, you will make water. And of course, if I just write that out, I get H2 plus O2 and makes H2O. Well, if this is correct in one sense, that the two combine to form water, However, if I look at the atoms, I have two hydrogens and two oxygens on this side, forming two hydrogens and one oxygen on this side. So in order to balance this, I need to adjust the coefficients of the different molecules or the count of the molecules so that I can actually get a balanced chemical reaction. So there are many ways I can do this, but one is that I can simply double the amount of hydrogen, and so two H2s mean I have four atoms of H. On this side, I also have four atoms of H. I have two atoms of O, and now I have two atoms of O on this side. So this reaction says the same information about hydrogen plus oxygen makes water, but it also provides a balance of how many moles of this would I require for one mole of this. So when I work with chemical reactions and combustion reactions in particular, molecules are going to be the way that I need to go. So I need to work on moles, not mass basis. Now, a couple of things related to this is that, first of all, if I'm providing this combustion reaction and I need oxygen, I could go purchase a bottle of oxygen and feed it into my combustion chamber, but that's expensive. I don't want to do that. That's, you know, crazy. Fire is supposed to be a cheap way to provide heat. So I'm not going to purchase pure oxygen. Instead, I'm just going to bring in air. Now, air is only 21% oxygen. The remainder is mostly nitrogen. There are other things, but I'm not going to need to worry about those too much. The order of magnitude, if I neglect the other compounds in air, is pretty small. So one mole of oxygen is going to be matched by 3.76 moles of nitrogen in a typical air sample. Now when I start talking about for so many kilograms per hour of fuel, how much air do I need? I usually would like to have that on a mass basis. And so normally we define our combustion processes in terms of an air to fuel ratio, but they are typically on a mass basis. My balancing reactions requires me to work in a mole basis. So simply use the molecular mass. Molecular mass of air times the number of moles of air is the mass of air. Do that for both of these, and this gives me a mole air to fuel ratio. So the air to fuel ratio that normal people would use on ma mass basis is the mole basis air to fuel ratio times the molecular mass of air over the molecular mass of fuel. Now the molecular mass of air is about 29, but the molecular mass of your fuel will vary, of course, depending on which fuel source you're using. Now I'm going to stop this here and we're going to come back and look at balanced chemical reactions for combustion in the next video.